to another edition of astronomy other motions okay so anyways uh in the previous sections we talked about a lot of the common motions that go along um in astronomy seasonal change daily change uh the sun's location how it affects uh different seasons here on earth but now we're going to talk about some other motions that are, are take a little bit longer uh, to occur and aren't talked about as much, uh, but they do have effect on our planet as well as how we view other planets. Uh, so the first one that I'm going to talk about here is this thing called obliquity. So obliquity uh, is dealing with the change in Earth's tilt. So normally we are looking at a tilt of 23 and a half degrees. That's what it is here. There we go. Um, and if we just took uh, an imaginary line here and you know drew it through the center of the Earth, imaginary line, yay, highlighters. Um, our north and south pole would just be tilted ever so slightly at 23 and a half degrees. Now, this is a kind of middle of the road, a little bit more towards um, you know having a larger angle. Uh, our smallest angle is 21 degrees, and our largest is almost 25. Oops, that's a bad color to use. 24 and a half, almost 25. There we go. And this occurs over the process of about 40,000 years. This isn't an instantaneous thing where we're, you know, at 23 and a half, and then all of a sudden now we're at 24 and a half, and everything is going crazy, all right? Um, this takes about transitions for about 41,000 years, um, I give or take a thousand. And uh, this is caused by the interaction with the sun and its huge amount of gravity on Earth and the Sun kind of pulls to the center here, kind of messing with this tilt over time. Um, it doesn't happen right away. Again, it does take a very long time to happen. Uh, another motion that the Earth does is called precession. And most of the time, precession is, uh, is talked about as um, a top spinning. So if you spin a top, eventually it starts to kind of wobble back and forth, and the Earth is doing kind of the same thing. This process takes about 26,000 years. So as we're rotating on our axis, as we're revolving on our axis, we're also kind of wobbling on this axis. So if we could picture that imaginary line again going right through the center of the Earth, as we are rotating, we're also kind of, you know, wobbling back and forth. And this process, another really long process, 26,000 years, and again, caused by gravity. Um, this is going to be caused by the gravity of not only the sun, but also the moon pulling on us. Um, so that combination really causes this uh, Earth to kind of wobble back and forth. Um, similar to a top. So we always refer to this as a top as far as toys go. Um, that's a big thing that people like to talk about. Oh, the procession, it looks like a top. Um, as the years progress, we might have to change that description because I don't know how many people use tops anymore as toys, but hey, whatever. Um, all right, another thing that we have here is this thing called eccentricity. So basically, all planets orbit in these things called ellipses. And that uh, goes back to Kepler's laws. All right, so that's the law of ellipses. And how much that ellipse is elongated um, is what we're talking about. So it can be very, be very close to a circle or it can be more egg-shaped. Um, and this takes a really long time. So if you think of Earth's orbit kind of like a rubber band, uh, it can stretch uh, 
a little bit um, as the years progress. And this takes a very long time, 100,000 years. And scientists have hypothesized that this 100,000 years might have something to do uh, with the length of our ice age periods uh, being farther away from the sun and closer to the sun. Uh, but we'll talk more about how these other motions affect climate in just a little bit. Uh, but before that, I have this nice diagram here Woo! of more circular objects on our sun as well as a not as circular orbit. It doesn't really highlight very well. Let me make it bigger. Maybe that'll be better. There we go. So here is our low centric orbit, and then here's our more centric orbit. Right, so one being a little bit more egg-shaped, the other being more circular. Right. Uh, so if we look at all of these things, over the course of time, they're called Milinkovitch cycles. Um, so say it with me now, Milinkovitch. Um, so these cycles can affect our Earth's climate over, you know, the course of a few, like, 100,000 years, right? Um, and most notably, these affect um, our poles, north and south poles, uh, seasons. So the equator, always getting this direct sunlight regardless of our tilt. Um, but in the northern and southern hemispheres, the more tilt we have, uh, in our obliquity over here, you know, the more direct sunlight we're going to get. So the more that's going to affect um, how much, or how long, I should say, our seasons are. Uh, so we can have a longer summer, longer winters. Uh, and then scientists have talked about this eccentricity here being a distinguishing factor into how our ice ages kind of go along. Uh, please do not confuse Milinkovitch cycles uh, with the current talk of climate change. So these have been around long before humans have and will be along long after humans have gone the way of the dinosaurs. So, you know, this is something that occurs naturally all the time. And when we're talking about changes in our seasons, we're talking like, oh, winter is 89 days this year. And then in 10 years, it might be 91. So, or 87 uh, days. It's not a huge amount of change. The biggest thing is going to be those ice ages that have occurred. And again, scientists are still, you know, out to lunch when it comes to um, what other factors went into the length of our ice ages. Okay. Um, so one other thing before I let you go on your merry way to go play Fortnite or whatever it is you do. Uh, there's this thing that we've talked about a few times called the retrograde motion. So essentially, um, if everything is orbiting around our sun, the further away objects are, the slower they move around our sun, not necessarily on their axis. So Mars is farther than Earth. So we can see this planet throughout the night sky, and that's what this uh, you know diagram here is showing, is showing... Uh, Mars, I should use pink because it's a red planet, right? There you go. On different dates, right? So, oh, everything looks good. It's moving forward, it's moving forward, it's moving forward, moving forward. Then, uh-oh, slowing down. Now it's moving backwards. Why is it going backwards in the sky? What could possibly cause this to go backwards in the sky? Well, what's happening here is the Earth is passing Mars. Passing it because it's a little bit closer, so it's moving faster around the sun. It's got a shorter year. Once it's done that, Mars moves forward just like it should. Uh, so this is kind of an optical illusion. Think of uh, if you're driving in a car and you look out and you see the trees. It looks like all the trees are moving backwards, when in reality, you're just moving forward and you're passing the trees. Kind of the same idea. So Mars is not actually moving backwards. It just looks like it is. And we call that retrograde motion. And this 
mess with scientists for the greater part of a thousand years. We were like, what the heck is going on with Mars and Venus? How could this possibly happen? Um, and uh, Tycho and uh, Ptolemy and came up with these you know, crazy epicycles to try to explain this. But what was happening is, oh, hey, here's Mars going through on its time. Oh, we're passing it. So it looks like it's moving backwards, but in reality, we're just passing it. All right, uh, that's all I have for you today. Um, you know, be kind, rewind. Uh, don't forget to, uh, I don't know, do good things. Be good people. Um, all right. Donut.